Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Sully's Models. So in this video, we're going to be looking at Airfix's 148 uh, Dogfight Doubles. This is the kit that contains the uh, Spitfire Mark 5B and the Messerschmitt uh, 109E. So uh, it's a dual kit, as I said. Um, it's quite a cool kit, actually, it's quite nice. Um, I've got this kit um, hoping to sort of, um, you know, reinstate a little bit of faith uh, back into Airfix. Um, it's been actually a very, very long time since I've done a kit uh, from Airfix, and there's two kits I want to do. Um, I mean, to be fair, they are the newer kits, um, but still been a bit, uh, a little bit apprehensive. Uh, I suppose you probably know most of the time I stick with uh, predominantly uh, Tamiya because uh, you know quite good value kits and um, the detail and, and quality of them I, I think are fantastic. Um, sometimes uh, a couple of Revel kits because you know even some of them are quite old they're not too bad um, but some of the Airfix ones I've done uh, in the past have been quite bad. Um, so. Hopefully this kit um, is going to restore a bit of faith in that. So I'll quickly tell you what we're going to be kind of looking at in this video because it's going to be slightly different from what I normally do. Um, so I'll be showing you both kits um, in the uh, this video. At the end I'll, I'll show you um, obviously the completed kit as well. Um, so it's going to be kind of a bit of a probably more quick run through uh, than what I usually do uh, in my videos. Um, so um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into the kits and uh, see where it takes us. So we'll obviously start with the instructions. Uh, they're very nicely uh, clearly laid out. They're a lot better than they used to be. Um, you know, very easily, uh, very easy to follow. Um, obviously, both uh, kit instructions obviously within the one. Um, manual uh, but as you can see there you know you've got the color schemes at the back of each um, after the, after each model as you would normally do in a you know for the singular one um, but yes um, you know it's nothing special as always <laughs> it's just uh, but very easily um, you know very easy to follow So next we have the decal sheet. Uh, it's got everything you need on there. There's even in, uh, instrument panels also there. The only thing that is missing um, is the uh, swash sticker uh, for the uh, 109, uh, which is quite a lot of common in a lot of kits these days. Um, so we'll start with the Messerschmitt. Literally it's just two sprues. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, it's um, the more simpler out of the two kits um, to build. Uh, but as you can see there, the detailing is very nice, nice and crisp, um, and you know everything is in all the right spaces. The Spitfire comes on uh, four sprues. Uh, again, um, really nicely detailed. Um, so this one seems, to, for some reason, seems to have more parts to it. I mean, admittedly. The uh, cockpit itself um, has the majority um, of the parts. Uh, the cockpit itself is built in a sort of a, a module um, of its own. But again, it says it's all, uh, you know, really nicely uh, detailed, as you can see there. And then finally we have uh, the stands. Uh, this comes in about uh, about five or six parts. You have the main base itself, um, a little um, airfix uh, badge, and obviously the uh, stands itself. Uh, it says the Spitfire's got the uh, most parts um, to it, so it was a slightly longer build uh, than the 109. Uh, but to be fair, um, actually goes together 
uh, quite nice. Um, didn't really have to make any major adjustments to get it all to uh, fit in. So, um, you know, that went together uh, quite nicely. Uh, the only bit we had to do is uh, saw a little part off there. Um, this was the runner rail, um, just so you can have uh, a closed canopy. This part was the only bit that was a bit um, off. So it was a large uh, chunk of sand in there to get that to uh, meet with the fuselage. Um, you have to drill, obviously, the holes for the stand because this is, this is actually is optional. Um, so just using the um, stand part uh, just to get the um, right holes drilled in the right places. Admittedly, there was a bit of fiddling getting the uh, wings to fit with the fuselage. Um, needed a bit of uh, taping down, but to be fair, that was was all you know pretty good. To be fair, the only other, other bit that was a bit annoying was um, the tropical filter. It's in two parts and took quite a lot of sanding to get that to be you know all nice and flat and you know seamless. Uh, with the canopy, I uh, made my own uh, masking. I didn't use any uh, pre-done mask, so uh, in the description below, if you want to check it out, I've done a uh, short video on how to do your own uh, canopy masking. Uh, it's quite simple and easy um, to do and uh, to follow. Uh, fitting the canopy itself, I used a uh, glue and glaze uh, by Deluxe Materials. Um, it's really cool. Um, you know, it doesn't leave any residue on sticking the canopy down and fits really, really nicely. Over the gun ports, I sort of made my own um, dope covering just by using uh, tissue paper and some PVA glue. Uh, so we move on to the 109 now. So this was the uh, quicker build out of the two. Uh, so it's very minimalistic uh, parts there. Um, so it was done uh, nice and quickly. The only thing I had to redo with this, there was a part underneath where the uh, stand uh, sort of mounting goes, which is a pair of side cutters and uh, some files just to uh, smooth that down and get that nice and flat. Uh, the only other bit of major work that I had to do on this was the slats because uh, the way this sprue was uh, moulded so that took a bit of uh, sanding and filling. Uh, one thing you need to remember as well with doing 109s, if you're doing um, it sitting on the ground you need to have them slats forward and if, if you're having it uh, in flight those slats need to be um, positioned obviously inwards. So pretty much the same process was done uh, between the two. Again, making my own masks. Um, weathering was done the same. Uh, quite heavy chipping. Uh, been out of the desert, so and obviously with a bit of grit in there, you know, makes the uh, chipping uh, of the paintwork. So that was done fairly heavily uh, across uh, the pair of them. Uh, and the same with uh, the uh, exhaust stains. They were also quite heavy because I've seen a lot of photos, uh, a lot of clean up. Uh, it wasn't done all that regular. The one technique I did do across the two was uh, salt weathering. Uh, I've done a video on that as well, which is in the link uh, below, but it's quite simple. Um, putting water across the top of the model, some sea salt, which I find is the better of the two, and then misting a light white or gray color over the top, um, which gives you a slight faded and model effect. So there you go guys, uh, that's the kit. Wasn't actually too bad, uh, quite happy with it. Um, I think I'll go ahead and get the, well eventually work on the two kits uh, that I want to do, which is the uh, their new Blenheim and uh, Wellington. Uh, particularly the Wellington, because I did that as my um, very first kit I built on my own. 
Um, so I'd like to kind of uh, revisit that and you know sort of do a bit of a comparison on how badly I used to do them compared to you know what I've learned uh, over the years uh, and, and obviously like put into practice. Um, so anyway guys, um, thanks uh, very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, to the channel, uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, as well. Uh, take it easy guys and uh, here's the finished model.